Hey guys, Jeff, welcome to today's video. So a couple of months ago, I made a video talking about how to sound more like Mark Hoppus on bass. And I guess you guys really liked that video because a few of you asked me if I could do a version talking about how to sound more like Tom DeLong. I guess I'm gonna put this out there first and foremost. I don't really consider myself to be that great of a guitar player. I think I'm more of a bass player that can play the guitar rather than a guitar player that can play the bass. But throughout all my videos, like the songs made complete and all the covers that I did, I sort of picked up on a few tricks of how to sound more like Tom. And I figured today I would try to show them to you as requested. So I'm gonna try to structure this video in like six parts. The three major parts are going to be like era based, so the early years, the popular years, and then the later years, like the angels and airwaves stuff. And then each part is gonna be divided into two parts. So how to get more like the sound that Tom used to have and then sort of emulate the playing. So the first era we're gonna talk about is the early years. Now it's actually pretty hard to know how Tom sounded back in those days because really what we have for reference are mostly really shitty videos of him playing live and some pretty average recordings. But it does seem like he used to put in a lot of output from his guitar. He does use a lot of distortion, like really mid-rangey, cheap distortion, think Metal Zone. And back in the days, I guess, the production wasn't as good and the guys weren't as professional. So the bass and the guitar don't really lock in as well as they do on later records. I guess that's what having a major label producer does to your playing. So the sound can get a little thin at times and it doesn't always sound that great, to be honest. But if you want to emulate that, what you're going to need is... Uh, uh, a pretty high output guitar. So I'm gonna purposefully use this Charvel with uh, active Seymour Duncan blackout pickups in them because I don't wanna use my Tom guitars for this. I'm trying to prove a point that you can sort of emulate this without you know, going through the trouble of buying the Tom guitars and all the same gear that he uses. I'm gonna be playing through this orange Micro Terror amp using a couple pedals. So to get the Tom sound, from this era, really what you need is a high output guitar with a, a lot of gain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the distortion all the way up, tone all the way up to get like this really thin sounding distortion. See, this is kind of too bassy, so I'm gonna go back on the amp, put the tone all the way up, give it a little more gain so it starts buzzing. And now we're pretty much at where, you know, you would want Tom to be. So you, when you play something... You're gonna get an idea of very saturated tones that don't sound very good. Now as far as the playing goes, Tom has often described this period as having really some nursery rhymes on steroids. And it kind of shows in the things that I just played right now. Uh, you would play very, very fast. You would do a lot of like three or four note progressions. Do an example here. Something that would kind of sound like a Tom or if I'm bad, would be something like Carol. <laughs> to the more commercial years that's when you start to get really the tom sound and i think a lot of people are trying to emulate these days you know the enema of the state take off your pants and jacket era really and um, at this point what you would want to do to get the sound is still you get the high output guitar but you start to put a little more bass in there take off some of the mids and really tone down on all that gain that you put in in the earlier years so for this i'm going to take, roll off a bit of the tone take down some gain here kind of do the same on the pedal and now if we do um At this point in his career, Tom started to figure out some more melodic things to play. So you still are gonna go with a three or four note progression, but you're gonna start to make the leads like more melodic. I always found that Dumpweed was a very good example of Tom's playing during like the Anima of the State and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. You're still playing fast, but not quite as fast as what you used to do in his early years. And yeah, you take the gain way down. Uh, good example. <laughs> Also a lot of power chords with Paul muting, that comes in a lot at that point in his career. And then the third era of his career when he got in a later career with like Untitled Album and really very much so with Age of Airwaves and Onward, that's when you want to start to get like the really atmospheric sounds. That's when you're going to start to need a delay pedal and really tone down on that gain and play a lot slower. So for example if we take... Um <laughs> We take the adventure. 
have that really atmospheric delay and very little gain. And you can tell I've turned up the gain on the amp just a little bit, not even using the distortion pedal at this point. Still using a pretty high output guitar. And then you just want to have these, um, these chords that are all basically based around the root. Things like that. He does these kinds of notes a lot. And then you'd have these really long playing line. <laughs> You're still building off on these like nursery rhyme ideas, but now you're making it a lot more atmospheric, a lot more clean. So things like that back in the days would have been like... like that where it would have played that very fast. Now he's still playing the same kind of nursery rhymes but like much slower, much more atmospheric with a delay. So anyways guys that's kind of my tips on how to sound more like Tom Belong. I hope you found this video interesting. If you didn't make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video. Peace guys.